So when studying inverse functions, a very important property about inverse functions is the so-called inverse function property, uh, which you see written on the screen right now, the inverse function property. What the inverse function property tells you is the following. If we have a function f and we compose it with its inverse function, so f composed with f inverse, we'll just spit back out an x, where x was the number we started with. And if you go the other way around, if you do f inverse first and then f, f inverse composed with f, if you apply that to the number x, will just give you back the number x. Now notice the function that assigns x to itself. This is what we call the identity function. It just identifies the number you gave it. So if you give it one, it says one. If you give it two, it says two. If you give it Pikachu, it says Pikachu, right? It just identifies what it sees there. When you compose a function with its inverse function, you get back just the identity. You get back the original number. And the idea is kind of like the following. If you have a machine, right? Let's take our, let's take our soda machine uh, that we talked about in a previous video, right? If we have a machine where you put inside of an input, you put inside of it an empty bottle, uh, it fills it up with soda, glug, 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 glug. It then spits out, it then spits out a filled bottle of soda ready to go to the store, right? We as the consumer do the inverse operation. The, the factory fills the bottle with soda and then we as the consumer drink the soda and thus sending it back to uh, an empty bottle, right? So the F inverse, is going to reverse this process, right? So instead of things going into on the right, F inverse is gonna send things in from the left and the output on the right. So when you do these things together in tandem, uh, it's as if nothing happened, right? It'd be like saying, oh, what's X plus three minus three? Well, whatever the number X is, it doesn't matter. If you add three, then subtract three, they're gonna cancel each other out and give you just back an X. This is what inverse functions are about. When you do them together, it's as if nothing happened. The net change is nothing. Um, and so let's do a more complicated example here. Let's take the function f of x equals 2x plus 3. And here's another function, g of x equals 1 half x minus 3 halves. I claim that these two functions are inverse functions of each other. In order to show that two functions are inverses, what you're going to do is you're going to compose them together. So compute f composed of, with g of x here, right? So this means you put g of x inside of f of x. Well, f of x just means 2x plus 3. So f of g would be 2g of x plus 3. And then inserting the definition of g of x, which we see right here, we're going to get 2 times 1 half x minus 3 halves. And then we add 3 to that. Now let's work to simplify this expression. Uh, to begin with, we can distribute the 2, uh, which is pretty nice because all the 1 halves that are in play there. Uh, you're going to get 2 times 1 half, which is just 1, so you just get an x. You're going to get 2 times negative 3 halves, which is just negative 3, and then you get a plus 3. Uh, what did we say a moment ago? Negative 3 plus 3, they cancel out, and you just get back an x. When you do f composed with g, it's as if nothing happened to the number. It just went on a big, big circle. Um, on the other hand, we, we want to check both directions here. F com g composed with f of x, that is, we're going to put f inside of g, g of f, which conversely, if you want to, that just means you're going to take g of 2x plus 3. You could evaluate f first and put that inside of the formula for g. You get 1 half times 2x plus 3 minus 3 halves. And so simplifying, I'm going to distribute the 1 half in this situation like so. Uh, that would give us a, well, 1 half times 2, like we saw before, is just a 1, so you just get an x. You get 1 half times 3, which is 3 halves, and then you're going to subtract 3 halves, which those are going to cancel out, and you're left again with just an x. And so you can see in this situation that no matter which order you compose them, f of g or g of f, in both situations, you get x just back. So the number x is unaffected. This tells us that g is, in fact, equal to the inverse function. Um, conveniently, this also tells us that f is equal to g inverse, right? Uh, so if a function is an inverse of another, then you know they're, they're inverses of each other, right? F is, G in, is G's inverse and G is F's inverse. And one can verify that a function is an inverse of another by this function composition. Uh, let's take another, let's look at another example, uh, a little bit more involved this time. We have some rational functions in play here. 
Uh, so we have the function f of x, which equals 1 over x minus 1, and g of x, which equals 1 over x, and then add 1 to that. To verify that these are inverse functions, compose the two functions together. So f composed with g, evaluate at x. So this means f of g of x. And so g of x is going to be 1 over x plus 1. Insert that inside of the function f of x. You get 1 over, replace that x with the 1 over x plus 1, and then minus 1. Now we're going to try to simplify this thing. In the denominator, you have 1 minus 1. These cancel. That'll leave you with 1 over 1 minus, or 1 divided by x. And whenever you divide by a fraction, you're just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply by x over 1, and that simplifies just to be x, the identity function. Conversely, if we do g of f of x, like so, we're going to put inside of g the function f of x. Well, g of x is the function 1 over something plus 1. That something is now the function f of x, which itself is a rational function. So we get 1 over 1 over x minus 1 plus 1. And like we saw a moment ago, if you divide by a fraction, you can multiply that by the reciprocal. You get 1 times x minus 1 over 1 plus 1. So the, the product will just become x minus 1. But then we have this plus 1 here still. Uh, the plus 1 minus 1, they cancel. And we end up with x again. And this is what happens when you have an inverse function relationship. When you do one and then the other, it just kind of unravels, right? Each step along the way, as you simplify these expressions, we're, we're forming inverse operations. I'm multiplying to cancel out the division. I'm adding to cancel out the subtraction that was in play here. You can show that a function is an inverse of another, right? F inverse is just this function g. You can show that two functions are in fact inverses of each other by composing them. And if this gives you back x in both directions, the inverse function property tells us that these are inverse functions. Now you'll notice in this example, uh, we were checking if two functions were inverses. This didn't actually show us how to compute whether, you know, how to compute. Like what if I give you f, what is the inverse of f? How do you, how do you, how do you pull that out of the air, right? We'll talk about that in a later video. At the moment, I just want you to understand how one can verify uh, two functions are inverses, uh, thus uh, demonstrating us the inverse function property.